Hola, amigos and amigas, and welcome to the Inner Sanctum. The office does appear that it needs some straightening up, but we're still in that rush phase. I am still in that rush phase of getting anything and everything that possibly needs to get ready to be readied. Shred's bark still hasn't gotten here, but there's still a million and one things to do. And once again, I am down here all alone, playing a lone card hand, working on the newsletter. Um, I let time slip by, so I have to have it basically written up by tonight, which is entirely possible because we have our summer schedule. And so in some respects, this is probably not too exciting of a a video, but if you've ever had cabin fever, you're aware that sometimes it's a good thing to talk to somebody else. So that's what I am using you for. I am relying upon you to be <laughs> other other human beings in my circle. Um, even the raccoons are like sleeping, so it's the trees in the parking area and this computer screen that I shall be staring at for a while. Let's bring some bow making into this. And so yesterday, I did a, a little spiel on speed drying wood. Everything has exceptions. You know, it's difficult. People ask me, what are the dimensions of this? What are the dimensions of this? And I, I really wish that I could give you hard and fast rules, but everything has an exception. And I, I like that people point out things that I don't know. Because there is a group of people out there, um, ranging from people who I have ultimate respect from as bow makers. I mean, you're out there. You may not, you may not respond or make comments, but I know you're listening. And those you bows that are seeing you back, they're quite impressive. And your Osage bows are quite impressive. And it's not necessarily important that you you poke your head up, you know, from the whack-a-mole holes of YouTube. I know you're there. <laughs> okay, so exception. I mentioned speed drying and I brought up um, possibly building solar kilns, small solar kilns, you know, and, and people, Lucius, you know, brought up the idea of he has a very large aquarium, you know, and then um, Ford Man brought up, what about acrylic tubes? Anything and everything. You are as intelligent and resourceful as I am, and so let your creativity fly free and experiment. It's all an experiment. And as I tell people, you know, when they're they're distressed because that bow they've been working on for a while breaks, I honestly think that we learn as much from, and I don't like to say failures, it's, it's destructive testing, and you learn something. Okay, so here we go into exceptions. If somebody was to ask me about speed drying, American elm, black cherry, the maples, the oaks, the hop horn beams, hop horn beam, um, ash, service berry, choke cherry, I could go on. There's probably like 30 something plus different kinds of woods that I've worked with. And they said, can you work it down? And can you, can you, before you speed dry, you have to let it get down to a certain moisture level. So don't just, like, get a green stave, work it down into a bow-shaped looking thing, a bow-shaped object, and stick it in your car and bake it in the sun. Because bad things can happen. It can twist and warp. You have to get some stability. So let it dry for, I don't know, a day or two. Be patient. Let it get down because the drying curve is really fast in the beginning it lowers really fast and then it slows down as it approaches 9%. So let it dry a little bit before you speed dry it. Um, then there was a question brought up in my speed drying video about Osage um, as far as like how long it takes to dry. I have never, and I admit my weakness in this area, this respect, I have never speed dried Osage. I don't live in an area where I can gather Osage. Um, there are a lot of other white woods, but when I get Osage, it's it's always dry to begin with, right from the get-go. Would I say that I believe that you could work an Osage stave down, you know, being careful when it's green to get it down to the, the heartwood, and then 
using your skills and your experience, working it down as closely as possible to the finished bone and speed drying it as you would whether or not it's American Elm or something like that or ash, white ash. I don't know. I, I could say I believe that you could work it the same, but you know, Osage is, is one of these woods. I consider you and Osage mulberry to some degree, not so much as like breaking the molds of bow wood. I don't know. I don't know if you can speed dry Osage the same way as you can any other wood. I would suspect you could, but who knows? Maybe even work down um, too close to a bow. Maybe for some reason Osage being such a unique wood will split. Maybe it'll check. Nothing else would, but I can't commit to Osage. Therein lies my question to you, bow makers of the world. I love it because literally I'm talking to people all, all over the world, all over the globe. See, I got that dig in. <laughs> um, do it. Try it. If you have access to Osage, by all means. Um, it, it's all adding to the knowledge base of our little bow club building thing here, our bow making club thing here. I better get my words together because i got to write this thing down. Um, experiment. See if you can speed dry Osage. See if it checks. See if it cracks. See if it behaves unlike other woods. And please, post, post your results. Um, become scientists and researchers in your own right. And part of that is like telling other people, because it's our responsibility, of course. It's in the, the Bow Maker's Guidebook that um, our responsibility is to teach the people younger than us and the people less experienced than us what we've learned. And that way this craft doesn't die. This art does not die. It grows stronger. It grows stronger every day. And, and so, thank you for watching. Um, thanks for putting up with me. I know I'm kind of an oddball, but you know, there was a time when I was normal. And it probably was to a greater extent maybe about 25 years ago before I got here. This is a strange, strange way to make a living. It's not a job, it's a lifestyle. And, and I, I don't know, that's enough. I'm going to stop talking now. Like I told my wife um, when we were having a minor disagreement. I'm sorry, but I'm a guy. I'm unable to shut up. All of us guys know that like the best thing we can do is know when to shut up, but we don't. It's in our DNA. Some things are, and that definitely is one. Aside from bow making, if you're in a relationship, learn how to shut up. It's the best thing for you. Another handy tidbit, tidbit is, we're always wrong. No matter who's right or wrong, the guy is always wrong. That's another thing to learn too. So, take my relationship advice. Um, make bows, drink coffee, get some sleep for me. God, I'm exhausted. I am so exhausted. But I cannot be too exhausted to when that shredded bark gets here any day now. Push a wheelbarrow 40 miles. Starting at day one and not ending until it's finished. Uh, so I keep my youthful figure. <laughs> uh, let me crawl over here and turn this thing off.